All right, I forgot my water bottle, which is probably gonna make this video one of the worst I've ever made because I'm my, my voice is just gonna go dry, just like that. Um. Okay. So, Louis Benoel. I think that's how you. Pre I'm just Benoel. I'm just gonna call him Benoel because it's French, and although I've learned French in the past, that I, I still have problems with the names, like most countries. Um. Now, I, I don't know much about him, I'll be perfectly honest. Most of my knowledge of French films kind of stop at New Wave movies and some modern stuff. And basically everything Isabelle Huppert's in, but I don't know much about Louis Bonnell. I've seen Un Chien and that's probably it. Although I've seen that movie about, like, two dozen times. I mean, it's a short film, so obviously I can watch it a lot. I'm fully aware of his status in the film world, and I understand his tendencies. I mean, he, he was, like like, best buddies with Salvador Dali, so obviously he, he's going for a more surreal approach. He likes abstract art and abstract stories. And, and from what I've heard, even compared to, like, The Exterminating Angel, The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie is the movie that I'm kind of supposed to kind of get into if I want to get into Louis Bunuel. I heard that this was the film that would perfectly introduce what his films were like in the 60s and the 70s and... I'm not sure he made a lot of stuff in the 80s, but definitely from his movies in the 60s and the 70s. Now, I need to make a disclaimer here. I am not that smart of a person. No matter how much you might be... Um, I'm going to address this later. Um, uh, no matter how much I talk about these movies and how much I talk about like movies from different countries, I don't really know much about those countries when it comes to, like, you know... Real life shit. If this film has a philosophical edge to it, or if it has like a social aspect to it, or if it has a political message to it, I have no idea if I'm getting anything right. Because I don't know how the social classes work in, in France. I don't know anything about French politics. So, be wary of that. Um, I feel like, from what I'm getting, at least from the social aspect of it all, it does do... It does do a very good job of making fun of the bourgeoisie by making them seem foolish um, from lust, pride, and, you know, kind of flaws in their faith, which comes both in uh, faith in in their in the aspects of, you know, faith, religion, and whatnot, faith in religion and whatnot, faith in others, um, faith in themselves. Um, and they, it, they're constantly portrayed as being very juvenile, impatient, very careless. They're very petty. They, they complain a lot, and they're very shallow. They're not likable characters, which is something that I do have a problem with when it comes to other movies, but in this case, I don't think the film is about the characters. I f and I'll, I'll get to that later. Um, and I do like the absurdity of it all. It is a very absurd film. The, it has a very off-kilter edge to it when it comes to the setting, the way, the, the way it's all light up. There's this one scene, and obviously this is like the fa most famous scene in the movie, there's this one scene where they're all sitting around the dinner table, and it turns out to be like a stage in a theater. And, but here's the thing, every single room they go into feels like that stage. It has that fake plastic sheen to it that kind of gives the film this dreamy, dreamy aura. Um... And I feel like because it's so absurd and because it's so off-kilter, it can do anything. And they use that absurdity to really kind of criticize these this cla th these kinds of people, this class of people with, like, extreme venom. Like, they kill them all. There, there, there are multiple dreams, dreams, dream, dream sequences where they're just killed off. Um, and I'm sure there's, like, other, like, Freudian ways of looking at these dreams, but I'm not really getting anything out of them. Um, I, I just like the fact that they, like, he's con- Benoel's constantly using the, these dream sequences to really deconstruct the way a story is told. It constantly rears away from, from the main story, or even this short story they tell once in a while, and it just plays with what's going on. There's a point where this one guy is like this tortured soul who's wandering wandering around the police station, and in the next scene, it turns out it was a dream, and he's just like this normal, regular cop. And there are so many moments where they just play with you. They address something, and they're like, nope, it's a dream, we're just gonna do whatever we want, and we're gonna just start everything over again. And it's kind of mind-boggling. Um, but, but you're constantly at the edge of your seat, because you don't know what's going on. But it's not like you're confused, you're just kind of mystified by it. 
You understand what the film's trying to do. It's just that you don't expect anything. You know, you're, you can't expect anything. Um, nothing that you expect happens in this movie. Um, so I feel like that, that's probably it from a technical standpoint. Like, again, well, not again, but like, it's well acted. It's well shot. It's, um, well lit, whatever. Every sing single technical aspect of this movie is good. Um, but I feel like this film, I like this more because of how surreal it is, and I, f I like it more for what I think it's trying to do. Because this is Bunuel, I don't think he's trying to tell a story. And I'm not sure if he's even trying to send a message to. There, I don't think there's like this grand philosophical idea in this movie at all. I think that, at least from every single film that I'm going to watch of his, I feel like with every single movie, he's not going to try and tell you something about the world and real life. I feel like he's always going to try and tell you an abstract idea and just put it in a film form, in a story form, in the most abstract way possible, but still making some coherent sense out of it all. I feel like this film is about how the audience feels while watching this movie, because, first of all, it creates a strange plot for a blueprint of the film's weirdness. You know, it's a bunch of people trying to have a meal. That's basically it, and they just repeat that again and again. They try to have a meal, but something happens, so they, they can't have it. Or they go to a restaurant, some guy's dead in the restaurant, so they're having a funeral, so they're disturbed, so they get out. They try to have a meal again, but then some people just come in with guns and kill the, kills them all, but it turns out to be a dream sequence. It constantly, you know, repeats this idea, and it kind of creates this dreamlike, repetitive mood. And then, obviously, the the strange off-kilter flow of it all, the strange close-ups, um, really surreal details and situations, especially the theater scene and, like, some other stuff where this, there's this, like, woman, like, spy who works for this resistance type of group, and she's, like, playing with mechanical animals in the street. Like, it's very surreal. Um, it almost, almost feels like a Monty Python sketch, minus um, the, the punchline. And I feel like constantly creating, creating this mood and constantly making the characters not able to eat, I think this is what the film's trying to do. I feel like the meal is the understanding of the film. And I feel like the characters are the audience, surrogate here, are audience surrogates. And there are multiple scenes where they're just kind of wandering on the road. And then the next scene would be them trying to have a meal. And of course, they'll never get the meal. So I feel like when they're wandering on the road, that's how the audience feels while watching this movie. We don't know what the fuck's going on. And then we get to the meal and we're, we kind of feel like we're going to understand. Maybe some revelation is going to happen when they finish it. But no, it's thwarted again. And they have to go somewhere else. And I feel like that's what the film's tr trying to do. It's very basic symbolism done in the most mindfuckish way. Like, the meal is the understanding of the film, the characters are the audience, audience surrogate, surrogates, and this is, like, clearly, clearly like, influences on, like, fucking David Lynch and, or whatever. And I feel, I feel like this is the symbolism because there are constant scenes uh, where a character is, is, is trying to, like, explain something. Or they're trying to, like, explain some detail. And they're trying to give some answer about what's going on. Like, why did that happen? Why did this happen? Who is that? Who is this? And whenever they try to explain it, there's this, like, weird jet noise that's just that just blocks everything. And all you can hear is that whirring sound of a plane or a jet. And you just see the people moving their mouths. And you don't hear anything. They never let you hear the explanations. They never let you hear the expositions. They're doing it, but, you know, you're supposed to be in the bl blind side. You, you cannot understand this film. This film is not going to let you understand this movie. You're the, guy, you're the people wandering on the road, trying to get the meal, but always not being able to eat them. Um, I feel like the film, in the end, is about the confusion of the audience um, who's watching an abstract film. Which, in many ways, is very meta. I'm not sure if I, I might be reaching here. Because it, this is the kind of movie where it kind of forces you to reach. Because I really don't understand what's going on. But I did have fun. Is there a flaw, flaw in the movie? Yes, it's not a perfect film. 
admittedly, because they constantly try to have a meal, it does get repetitive. And although you, you don't know what to expect when in those individual meal scenes, you know they're gonna have, they're gonna try and get another meal, something weird's gonna happen, it might turn out to be a dream sequence, it might not. And it's just gonna start again, we're on the road, the meal, weird stuff, dream sequence or not the dream sequence, and then we, we're back on the road. But I feel like, even though that part of the film is very repetitive, it tries to aid that with, like, intertwining very interesting and dark stories, possibly criticizing... I feel like it might be criticizing TV culture through that, because the film is making fun of the audience being confused. And then there's this, these short stories told by... Um, just very small side characters about their childhood when when they saw his like his mother's when his mother's ghost telling him to kill his so-called father. There's this one character who talks about his dream where he meets his dead friend and his dead girlfriend or wife or lover or whatever. And there are just multiple moments like that, and it clearly focuses way too much on that. It it just totally takes a takes a sudden turn into that short story, and I feel like it might be criticizing the short attention span that, that TV culture is kind of bringing into film the uh, film audiences. I'm not sure. I feel like that might be me. That might be me just reaching more. Uh, but those short stories does help with the repetitiveness repetitiveness of the film. It does make it all seem more fresh. It doesn't. It doesn't tire you with the idea. So, yeah, it's it's good if you like your movies to make sense and not have, like, not be the... If you don't like your movies being this one gigantic symbolism of the film experience, this is not the movie for you. Um, but if you just want to watch um, a film where rich people are portrayed in a very foolish light while weird shit happens... Why not? Get high. Do do whatever. Just put it in the background. I don't care. There's not even, like, mu there's not even music in this movie. It's like a completely silent film. But, yeah, uh, it's good. I'm kind of scared about watching The Exterminating, Exterminating Angel. My tongue's not working anymore. I'm very thirsty. So, yeah, this is the end of the review. The Street Charm de Bourgeoisie. Bleah. Bye.